Are you hoping that eventually all all pub, all uh, all tram stops and train stations will be accessible f for people with disabilities? Well, we live in hope, but it won't happen in our lifetimes. I can tell you that. And uh, it's not only public transport; it's access to education, employment, housing, affordable housing. There's a whole lot of things that we need access to. So you have to choose your battles wisely, and and um, that's what I'm trying to do here. Michael, could you just to make a difference with the accessible public transport and make a bit more of it? Yeah. Uh, Michael, would you describe how difficult is it for a person with a scooter to access public transport when boarding? What actually happens? Well, pretty much. For example, in Victoria Street, Richmond, near where I live, I cannot get on a tram. Yet I see low floor trams going by every day, all the time, and there's just no physical way of getting on them. But I might be able to get on a tram stop in the city where there's quite a few accessible tram stops. But uh, and this goes for other people in you know in outer suburbs. You, you can get on in the city, but how can you get on and off a tram where you live? So what's the point? That means the whole network's inaccessible to you. Is this so that's what we're trying to change here. Is this because there's a gap between getting on or there's no ramp available to get on? Or what, what I can you just explain a bit more about it? Well, if you've got a scooter, the, the, the step up into a low floor tram is 290 millimetres. So there's no physical... Yeah, a scooter and a wheelchair weighs quite a bit. So do a tram most probably. So parents have great difficulty. And if, you've got, if you're a senior citizen and you've got a walking frame, forget it. If, or if you fall down and break your hip. So there's a lot of public liability issues here as well. So, what, so I guess in terms of, in terms of, um, the, I mean, in terms of mo money, the, go the, the government is going to say, well, well, it's going to, it's, going to cost, or, you know, it's going to cost money well, I to, to do this. Most probably it will cost seven or eight hundred million over five years. The, the state government's just announced, I believe, um, spending 174 million on Z-line carriages, and they've recently announced that they're, um, as far as I'm aware, they're spending $10 billion on a road tunnel. Is so, I mean, money is not the issue here. What we're talking about is fair and equal access public transport was a basic human right and uh, unless people stand up and, and demand their human rights be met nothing will get done so that's what we're trying to do well michael tell us about the protest well that was a bit of fun it was on monday the 26th of november started at flinders street station uh working with the police we had an escort going up the tram tracks on Swanson street and then we turned up Collins Street and then went into Exhibition Street where the Department of Transport is and, and fortunately um, we were able to get Jim Betts, the Secretary for the Department of Transport, to come down and have a chat with us. And then fortunately he chatted with the Minister and since then uh, we've arranged a meeting at Parliament House. So we've worked with um, as volunteers um, for the Department of Transport before when we developed the um, another protest three years ago. and ended up developing a scooter and wheelchair travel pass, which is available from Southern Cross train station at the central pass office. If you have a permanent severe disability and use a scooter or wheelchair outside your home, you can have free public transport based on the fact that you can't basically get on the half of it, or more than half of it. So that was good, but now we need to work on more accessible public transport projects to fix the problem that exists. and. Um, Actually, in January, February next year, um, as a result of that previous protest, we are getting um, two easy access tram stops built on Bridge Road in Richmond. Um, right, one is right near the Epworth Hospital, in fact. And so that will provide level access. But that was funded by the previous government. All the funding from this current government has been cut for accessible public transport projects. And that's what this campaign's all about, trying to um, get that funding back up what? so that we can keep the momentum moving forward on change for more fair and equal access to public transport.
because it's a basic human right for everyone. Michael, there's there's um, there's disability uh, tr transports standards and other pieces of legislation. Is the c current government is the current government meeting their obligations by c cutting funding to transport? No, not at all. And I'm glad you brought that up because um, the Disability Discrimination Act 1992. Um, and the disability standards for accessible public transport 2002 set all the legislation and guidelines for accessible public transport in Victoria. And the state government is, um, and the Department of Transport is way behind. Um, I think by 2007, they were supposed to have 25% of trains accessible, and they haven't even met that. By the end of this year, they're supposed to have 55 per cent of trains accessible, and they, there's no, they're nowhere near it. And so, uh, to even get close to it, they'd have to build 600 accessible train stops by the end of the year, and I don't think they're going to do that. And that's just one example. Yeah, so, I mean... You know, we're not asking for the world here, we're just asking them to meet their moral and legal obligations under Commonwealth law, and um, that's not too unfair, I think. I mean, it's a fair and reasonable request and everybody will benefit from it. I think even the politicians will benefit from it. Right, well, is it, with disability in public transport, why is public transport so important to people with a disability? Well, uh, like Kath Duncan was saying earlier, you know, people with disabilities don't have a lot of job opportunities out there, and, and all that's gonna change as well. But, you know, just if you wanna to go to the city, get some education, maybe go to RMIT, something like that, I have done, and um, it's very difficult to get, get around. And if you can't just get from point A to point B, um, like everyone else, and it's a real struggle, then basically, how are you going to get an education? How are you going to get a job? You know, how can you go have a social life and go and visit friends easily? Um, it's just not easy. It's very different. As if having a disability isn't hard enough, you know, um, it's not fair. So, you know, accessible public transport kind of links everything together and, and helps you to have a more um, fair and equal life compared to everyone else, which has got a long, way, a long, long way to go before we even get there. Uh, so, Michael, it appears that better public transport would enhance people's quality of life. Well, absolutely. It just makes it easier to, to move around the city and um, and to not be stuck in, in one area or isolated or have to travel in the rain and the cold and the wind, which, I, you know, I'm 41 years old and I've been scootering in and out of the city for over 20 years. And I've been through all sorts of weather conditions on my electric vehicle. And, um, yeah, so I watch people go by in the trams, all nice and warm in the tram, or on a hot day, they're nice and cool with air conditioning. And I'm racing the trams along the footpath. So and um, I just think, well, you know, if I'm doing that, there's got to be thousands of other people doing it as well. And or maybe they can't even travel that far on their wheelchair or scooter. So, so what, that's why I'm doing this. So what are you, what are you hoping to what from your meeting with the minister? What what are you hoping to to achieve or, or to get him to to? Well, I want the minister to go back to cabinet and um, talk with the finance people uh, and um, then get back to us, have another meeting, and it's going to be either yes or no. Um, if it, and I don't know how much it will be or what it will be exactly. But depending on the offer, if we're not happy with it, we might have to escalate our previous civil protest into a more um, radical type protest to really get their attention. Um, and I don't want to do that. But um, we have to do what we have to do to get the job done. And, and we're not, we're very serious and determined and and we're going to see this through as, as well so that um, everybody can have fair and equal access to public transport Michael, in our lifetimes sooner rather than later. Uh, Michael, how long have you been involved with the public transport campaign for people with disability? Oh, since about 2008 I started to get involved 
and um, you know, his writing campaign is on the bank going uh, for three months. So. Um, yeah, they've all been pretty full on for a few years. Um, every day, you know, working on it as a volunteer. If people I'm want like a disability support sorry, pension. Michael. Sorry, Michael. If people want to, um, if people want to fo follow your t travails and the travails of the campaign, I know you're on f Facebook. What's what's the easiest way people ca can get in touch? Um, well, the um, name of the Facebook group, our campaign is Victorian State Government Must Fund Accessible Public Transport Project. Yeah, it's a bit long-winded, I know, but it's very specific. It is, and... Um, otherwise, I'm on Facebook, Michael Merrick, M-E-R-R-E-T-T. -E um, otherwise, there is a YouTube video I just uploaded about protests, a recent one, um, which has got two parts to it. It's uh, called Direct Action Protest Access Public Transport. Fair, part fair, one and part two. Fantastic. And, it, and uh, yeah, what, what, are, what, what ways can people get involved if they want to? Um, well, I'd say um, we need more people with disabilities taking a leadership role and... Um, uh, getting out there and um, you know advocating for more uh, fair and equal access to all areas of life and um, fighting for human rights for people with disabilities um, in a diplomatic um, professional kind of way even if you are an amateur you can, um, you can actually if you can do a leadership course it would be great I'd happen to do leadership class in 2009 and I'm not sure, I think they're not uh, up and running at the moment, but um, I think there's another one, Leaders for Tomorrow, um, going around, and um, that really benefits uh, myself to um, understand what, what you can be capable of. And um, I think that if more people with disabilities did leadership courses and got involved, it would be a better world to live in for everyone. Fantastic. Very good sentiments on this day of... Uh on this International Day of, of Disability. Thank you very much for joining us today, Michael. Good luck with your campaign, Vict Victoria Must Fund Accessible Public Transport. Thank you, Finn and Daniel, um, and you're most welcome. Uh, great to talk with you, and um, I hope we can talk again soon with a further update. We look forward to it. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Finn. Bye. That was Michael Merritt. Um, uh, t talking about how or how and why Victoria must fund accessible public transport.